Today we're going to do 2012 practical exam. Well, I said before, 2012 is one of the most difficult practical exam for the past 10 years. But of course I say, do not fret, because there's always the two basic steps that we do before we start any practical. I call it the PE. P stands for preparation and E stands for execution. Now you can see over here that the whole table is set up, so we are very well prepared. Are you ready? Let's begin the experiment. Now, part A says, remove the stopper from the test tube label as solid P. Heat this test tube gently and then more strongly until no further changes are seen. While you are heating the test tube strongly, place a glowing slit near the neck of the test tube. Well, before I start heating, let's test the Bunsen burner. They say I'm going to use a glowing splint, so let me prepare by using a lighted splint. This is a lighted splint, so I let it burn, and this is P, so let me heat it gently first, and then strongly. This is a glowing splint. I place it at the neck of the test tube, and let's see. I can see from here, that P slowly melted and is turning to a colorless solution. And the gas evolved actually relights the glowing split. I finished my first step. Let me quickly write down my observation. Solid P melted and becomes a colorless solution. Gas evolved relights the glowing split. I'm supposed to repeat this for solid Q. So let me remove the rubber bar. Prepare my split. As usual, I like the split first. As I heat Q gently and then strongly, I notice that white fumes is evolving. I place the glowing splint at the neck of the test tube. I can see from here that solid Q melts, but it gives up a gas. So it's going through sublimation. The white fumes evolve, actually extinguish the glowing splint. Solid Q did not change any color. It remains as white. But white films evolve actually extinguish the glowing split. So let me write down the observation. Upon heating solid Q, it remains as white solid. It goes through sublimation. White fumes evolves and white solid forms at the side of the test tube, condense and form at the side of the test tube. Let me move on to the second part, part B. It says over here that I'm supposed to add one CM cube of solution P. Well, I have my P, Q, and R in front, so let me. Take one cm cube of P. I have already marked it during the preparation time, and another one cm cube of sodium hydroxide. I'm supposed to gently heat the mixture and then boil it for one minute and test any gas evolved with litmus paper. So let me prepare my litmus paper. Dry litmus paper have no use. They do not turn any. They do not have any reaction with any gases. So I better dab it with. The still water, let's prepare and let me hold. Let me start heating gently and then strongly for approximately about a minute. I can see from the side here that bubbles are forming, so I need to be careful not to overheat it. Well, the gas evolved have no reaction with the litmus paper. Litmus paper remains unchanged. 
but the question says here that I have to gently heat the mixture for about a minute so I have to follow the instruction make sure that I boil off everything that's necessary for one minute still no reaction all right now the second part says that add a piece of aluminium foil to it so let me quickly add a piece of aluminium foil now according to the QA notes here after you add sodium hydroxide and then you add aluminium foil you are actually testing on nitrate if there is nitrate involved ammonia gas will be produced and the way to test for ammonia gas is to use a damp red litmus paper if the damp red litmus paper turns blue it shows that ammonia is present so let me start heating it gas evolved turned damp red litmus paper blue and it's pretty quick so let me write down my observation quickly. Now, first of all, when I add sodium hydroxide, there's no visible reaction. So no visible reaction with NaOH. And when I test the litmus paper for the first portion, also no visible reaction. However, when I add in the aluminium foil and I test it with litmus paper, then red litmus paper turn blue. It shows that nitrate is present. So I should come to here to the conclusion and write down that P contains nitrate. And then my evidence will be part B when NaOH is added, followed by aluminium foil, gas evolve, turn, then red litmus paper blue. Ammonia is present. Let me move on to my solution Q. Same thing with Q. I've already do the marking, so let me quickly write down Q. One cm cube of Q, and another one cm cube of sodium hydroxide. As usual, prepare my litmus paper, making sure that. Damp it first and let me heat the test tube. Always heat the test tube at 45 degree. I see bubbles coming up, let me test whether there's any reaction to the litmus paper. Gas evolved turned damp red litmus paper blue. So let me write down. Now when I first add uh, sodium hydroxide, there's no visible reaction. But for this portion, uh, damp red litmus paper, damp red litmus paper, turns blue. It shows that according to my QA notes with sodium hydroxide and damp red litmus paper turn blue, ammonia gas is evolved. Actually, I found out that Q contain ammonia. So I quickly go to my third, third picture and write down Q. Let me put down my test first. Q contains ammonia. And evidence as usual in part B when NaOH is added and wall gas evolve turn then red litmus paper blue wow that's easy okay let me quickly heat it now according to the questions they say that i have to warm it gently for about a minute basically i'm supposed to expel all the ammonium that's inside because the second part I am supposed to test for nitrate if it so happened that there's no nitrate in Q and I did not expel it all the ammonium out for the first portion I might have a positive reaction for nitrate for the second part so I have to faithfully making sure that I heat it for about a minute So time is approximate about one minute. Let me 
control the four inside. Well, the second part for my part B is to test for the nitrate test. You should hit it gently. Well, it also turns. According to the Cambridge Examiner report, actually for this portion here, there is no nitrate. But if the first part I did not expel all the ammonia out, I will have such a reaction, which I think most students will get the same thing in O level. And if I were you, I would still write down at this part, then red litmus paper turn blue. It could be a nitrate, but let's move on and see how is it, okay? Now, for R here, this is R. Let me do it likewise. Sodium hydroxide. Litmus paper. Heat. I see bubbles coming up. Seems like there's no reaction with the litmus paper for this part. Okay, same thing. No visible reaction with NaOH and no visible reaction with litmus paper. Let me add on the aluminium foil. Same thing, heat, there's gas involved. Gas evolved have no change with the litmus paper. So let's put this down. Then litmus paper remains unchanged. Let's move on to part C. I have my marking for the previous round if I'm doing my preparation, so let me add on. Well, for the rest of the part, I do not need my Bunsen burner, so let me just off the burner. It says here, place 1 cm cube of P and 1 cm cube of nitrate acid and another 1 cm cube of silver nitrate. Everything has no reaction, no visible reaction. And then the last part here says at about 1 cm cube of aqueous ammonia. I have aqueous ammonia here. No visible reaction for all the steps. So I'm going to write down when I add 1 cm cube of silver nitrate, I should say no visible reaction. Second part, when I add uh, aqueous ammonia, also no visible reaction. Well, according to the QA notes here, silver nitrate is actually to test for the presence of chloride. If there's a white PPT, there should be a chloride. So for P, I can safely say that there is no chloride at all. Let's move on to Q. Same thing, 1 cm cube of Q. Another 1 cm cube of nitric acid. And another 1 cm cube of silver nitrate. Well, that is white precipitate present. Let me quickly write down white PPT is C. To this, I need to add another 1 cm cube of aqueous ammonia. Well, white PPT do not dissolve at all. So, white PPT remain unchanged. When there is white PPT seen in Q, it shows that chloride is present. So I quickly go to the third picture and say that Q contains chloride 
part C, when silver nitrate is added, YPPT was C. Let's move on to R. Same thing, 1 cm cube of R. And then another 1 cm cube of nitrate acid with another 1 cm cube of silver nitrate. White PVT is seen. So white PVT is seen. Next part says the last part, not forgetting my aqueous ammonia. My white PVT remains unchanged. So white PVT remains unchanged. I can safely say that R contains chloride because part C, when silver nitrate is added, white PVT was C. I'm almost done. Okay, left with the last part. Part D, place another 1 cm cube of P and then 1 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid and then another 1 cm cube of barium chloride. No visible reaction. No visible reaction. Q, same thing. 1 cm cube of Q. 1 cm cube of hydrochloric acid. And another 1 cm cube of barium chloride. Also no visible reaction. Finally, my R. Same thing, 1 cm cube of R. 1 cm cube of hydrochloric acid. Followed by another 1 cm cube of barium chloride. No visible reaction. Well, I have safely finished the experiment.